Year 10 and 11, welcome to your analysis of tissue by Imtiaz Daga in preparation for your AQA, English Literature, Poetry exam. We'll start by reading the poem. Paper that lets the light shine through, this is what could alter things. Paper thinned by age or touching, the kind you find in well-used books. The back of the Quran, where a hand has written in the names and histories, who was born to whom. The height and weight, who died where and how, on which seek the date, pages smoothed and stroked and turned, transparent with attention. If buildings were paper, I might feel their drift, see how easily they fall away on a sigh, a shift in the direction of the wind. Maps too, the sun shines through, their border lines, the marks that river makes, roads, real tracks, mountain folds. Fine slips from grocery shops that see how much was sold and what was paid by credit card might fly our lives like paper kites. An architect could use all this, place layer over layer, luminous script over numbers over line, and never wish to build again with brick or block, but let the daylight break through capitals and monoliths, through the shapes that pride can make, find a way to trace a grand design. With living tissue, Raise a structure never meant to last, of paper smoothed and stroked and thinned to be transparent, turned into your skin. So first of all, we must ask ourselves, what is the poem about? Okay, the speaker in this poem uses tissue paper as an extended metaphor for life. You must get that, guys, because obviously the title of the poem uh, gives away that it's an extended metaphor, really. So... Empty as darker considers how paper can alter things and refers to the soft, thin paper of religious books. So she mentions the Quran, doesn't she? She also uses real life references to other lasting uses we have for paper. Maps, receipts, architects, drones. Each of these items is connected to important aspects of life, such as journeys, money and homes. These examples demonstrate how important, but also how fragile paper is. In the final stages of the poem, the poet links the idea of a building being made from paper to human skin, using the words living tissue and then your skin. So that's quite a complex idea, guys. Remember, it's an extended metaphor. The tissue is an extended metaphor for how things can alter. Um, but also at the end of the poem for our skin. She may be suggesting that the significance of human life will outlast the records we make on paper or in buildings. But don't forget, guys, throughout the poem, we have the fragility of human life and the fact that not everything lasts. And we know that because as the poem progresses... We are told that the paper, uh, which is our skin, begins to become thinner and begins to weaken. And that is the fragility of human life. Okay? Don't forget to stop the video if you need to make extra notes. I do have a tendency to talk quickly. If we begin with the structure of the poem, tissue is mainly constructed in unrhymed, irregular quatrains. This form can be seen to represent the irregularity of life and the flimsy nature of tissue paper the poem refers to. The poem consists of ten stanzas. The first nine have four lines in it, but the final stanza is only one line. So it really draws our attention to it. So separating this line emphasises the connection between paper and skin and really shows us the significance of human life. The poem uses free verse, as I said, unrhymed, and it lacks rhyme. Its rhythm is unsteady, as if mirroring the, to mirror sorry, the fluttering of tissue paper. The free verse, as I said, the irregularity of human life, the unpredictability of human life, The poet uses enjambment throughout the poem. So each stanza runs into each stanza, each line runs into each line. And this adds to the flowing, delicate nature, both of paper 
and of human life. And the poet compares the tissue to the human life. Okay. So stanza one. So stanza one. Um, paper that lets the light shine through. This is what could alter things. Paper thin by age or touching. Paper that lets the light shine through. The light that shines through the paper could represent God. The light is often used as a symbol of truth or in religious texts, a representation of God. And in the second stanza, the speaker refers to the thin paper in the Quran, further supporting the idea that the light being Allah or God is what is altering things. Paper thinned by age or touching. The thin paper is a metaphor representing old age. As we age, our skin becomes thinner and the poem may suggest that when this happens, things alter because as we age, we gain wisdom. As we age, we experience things that change us. Stanza 2. The kind you find in well-used books, the book of the Quran, where a hand has written in the names and histories who was born to whom. Used books is an extended metaphor of the paper representing human life. The metaphor here is the suggestion that the human skin has been touched and used by others, much like the Quran. We've been touched, we've been used. The book is a metaphor for human life. The Quran has been touched and used and read. Okay. Um. Obviously, where we hear about the the written names in history, it's a reference of people and famous people being recorded on paper. That's where we keep a record of famous people in paper. And, and actually, as the poem progresses, Imdi is dark is saying that we can outlive records and we can, not outlive, sorry, outlast, we can outlast paper, we can outlast the records of paper. Um, but can we really? Stanza three, the height and weight, who died, where and how, on which sepia date, I might be pronouncing that wrong, I apologise, pages smoothed and stroked and turned transparent with attention. Um, who died, where and how is obviously a reference to the paper of a birth and death certificate. So again, the importance of paper being an important document, but it turns brown over time because it dates. Pages smoothed and stroked and turned transparent with attention. Again, extended metaphor. The paper is human skin here, which is smoothed and stroked by the touch of another human being. All right? So the paper and the pages re are representing affection, physical affection between two humans and how that affects us, how that affects our skin. And when we get the reference of the, the brown paper, which is dated... Uh, apologies there, sorry, that also represents human life because our skin changes and we change in terms of appearance as we age. It's turned transparent with attention is again metaphor. It's what happens to the paper, but it is the fragility of human life. It's how people change as they age. It's how we become fragile as we age, physically, mentally. We also become fragile by touching and encountering and, and, and loving other people. Okay. Stanza form five. If buildings were paper, I might feel their drift, see how easily they fall away on a sigh, a shift in the direction of the wind. Maps too. The sun shines through their borderlines, the marks that river rivers make, roads, rail tracks and mountain folds. So she says, if buildings were paper, I might feel their drift. So buildings don't move, obviously, is what she's saying here. Um... And that they can't fall away or that they can't shift in the direction of the wind. So where paper is fragile uh, and, and quite vulnerable in terms of shifting in the wind, uh, buildings aren't. And this is the metaphor of how human life um, can outlast and should outlast buildings. And human lives are more important than buildings. But actually... In comparison to buildings, we are more vulnerable because the direction of the wind will move the paper, which is an extended metaphor for us, isn't it? 
So is the suggestion there that we are easily affected by things? We are easily affected by nature. Um, in the stanza above that, we are easily, easily affected by the touch of others, other people touching us. Okay. Um, the marks that rivers make, roads, rail tracks, mountain folds, a reference to human skin again. This map here, yes, okay, it's really a map on paper, but it's a map of the human skin. This, the blemishes we have on our skin. Veins we can see on our skin as it thins. Um, any marks we acquire, acquire as we age, whether that be a scar, um, a wrinkle, all of the marks that are attained during human life are represented metaphorically by a map. And the map, a map is a journey, isn't it? And and, and what Imtia's darker is seeing here is that our life is a journey. And you've just got to look at our skin to see the journey that, that we have or haven't, haven't encountered. The sun shines through their borderlines. The marks that river makes, the roads. So, yeah, the skin here um, represents the map. Our blemishes, our veins, our scars, everything, anything we've attained during human life. Stanza six and seven. Find slips from grocery shops that say how much was sold and what was paid by credit card might fly our lives like paper kites. An architect could use all this, place layer over layer, luminous script over numbers over line and never wish to build again with brick. Stanza six and seven is a is a practical use for paper. So the receipt we get in the grocery show, uh, sorry, store, not show, um, the paper made by a credit card, the architect having to draw places. Um, if we look closer, might fly our lives like paper kites as a simile and it is the image of freedom. The idea of the wind carrying paper becomes the image of freedom within the poem. So, you know, we've all seen a kite and how easily the wind picks it up. And that is the representation of freedom. The stanza above these two mentioned how, the, how a building will not, sh will not shift when the wind moves. A kite will. Paper will. The idea that human life can. Nature can affect us. The paper kite of freedom. The freedom that people long for. Yeah, a kite, remember, a kite is also tied to something, isn't it? Because you hold a kite. So um, is there a sort of reference there that whilst um, our lives are about being free and exploring what we want... Um, is it that we are actually tied down to someone else or or something else? Just a suggestion, remember, uh, poetry is interpretation. The practical uses of paper, it's almost as if documents of paper show our lives. We document our lives, don't we, when we get receipts from the shops, when we use our credit card, if we write something down, our birth certificate, our death certificate. It is all tracked through paper. The architect's a little bit different because an architect obviously creates things. Um, foundations from the ground upward again is it metaphor for someone's life being created from the ground upward layer over layer um, the different layers of our personality the different layers of our lives never wish to build again with brick so what we've got here then is that the architect's paper is more powerful is more poignant than the brick itself because remember what Imdia's dog was talking about how human life should outlast these buildings that are made from brick. Stanza 8 and 9. Or block but let the daylight break through capitals and monoliths through the shapes that pride can make. Find a way to trace a grand design with living tissue. Raise a structure never meant to last of paper smoothed and stroked and thin to be transparent. Um... So the speaker says that human life is one is a wonderful construction, but very fleeting, because she says it's never meant to last. A structure never meant to last. That's a metaphor for human life being wonderful, uh, but very short. The grand design could refer to the way a life is built. As I said, we've gone from the architect building something here. So is that a reference to the way human life is built? Every single human life is unique and grand, a grand design in its own way, but it's not meant to last. So we have the contrast there of something wonderfully grand that has been created, but the idea that it will come to an end. So it's quite a sad idea that um, 
interestingly she does use punctuation there and never meant to last so that halts the reader and that really emphasizes the fact that it will come to an end and um, the poet refers to the religious idea that man is made in the image of god the grand design suggests the perfect image of god that is traced with living tissue so therefore the perfect image of god is traced in the form of human beings okay um, we do have an extent the extended metaphor again here uh, of paper being human skin, which is smoothed and stroked and thinned. So we've got that repetition of that metaphor. Remember, it is an extended metaphor, the whole poem. And it's the idea that by the touch of another um, and by life in general, our skin becomes thinner. We become more vulnerable as we age. And as we experience things in life that can weaken our character, I suppose, that make us more vulnerable. And finally, the one line of stanza 10. I mentioned that at the beginning in structure about it being one line and really standing out for emphasis, turned into your skin. The final stanza is one line in length. Separating out this line emphasises the connection between paper and skin and shows us the significance of human life. This one line shows us the extended metaphor of the title, tissue. The direct pronoun, your, speaks to the reader as we value human life and compare its vulnerability to paper. We compare our skin to paper like the extended metaphor throughout the poem suggests. The paper turned into your skin. So throughout we've heard that our the paper on our skin is smoothed and stroked and thinned. We've heard about the map and the blemishes and the veins that we can look and see on our skin. We know that papers are fragile and blows in the wind. We know that human skin is quite vulnerable and fragile and won't last. So the language in the poem then, the speaker emphasises the delicacy of the paper by using adjectives throughout. We have fine, thin and transparent. Okay. The effect of light is also emphasised with luminous daylight and the way the sun shines through. Remember that's supposed to be a representation of God. References to the thin paper used by architects, shopkeepers and bookbinders are made to connect the practical uses of paper. These images provide an extended metaphor for human skin and life. Example question and example plan. What makes the poem tissue engaging and appealing to the reader? Our introduction then might explain that the paper is an extended metaphor. Examine how the poet refers to the lasting significance of human life, but also its fragility. We might then sum up the religious texts and how they use paper and explore the suggestion that religion itself is fragile. We might then go to the imagined use of paper, so paper buildings, how the speaker says buildings would be fragile if they were made from tissue. Concrete examples and look at how paper is used in the grocers and in the architects, the fragile nature of these, how money and buildings are also transient. And then we might conclude with how tissue paper is like skin and both are fragile. Obviously in there we would be analysing poetic technique and poetic structure um i hope this video has been useful if you do want any more of my videos just type stacy ray into youtube s-t-a-c-e-y and ray is r-a-a-y and good luck in your poetry exam